Once again, it is a great joy and honor to come into your homes. Yes, it is our week of fasting and praying, day two. So, if you just forgot or somebody did in your family, remind them, talk to them, call somebody, and let them know it's a great time to be in the presence of the Lord. And something else I need to let you know, that this word is so spot on. I didn't realize it when I was starting to pray about the message, but as I was preparing it, my word, I got too excited, and so will you. So come on, friends, members of our church, others that are watching, all you equally welcome. Please join us. Prayer is for everybody. Prayer is for the entire world. And so as we come together, I know it might be a struggle for some of you who haven't fasted for a long time, but you're going to get there. Like we say, start half a day, one day, whatever it is. And I'm sure you must have been blessed with Pastor Llewellyn last night. What a time we were for the opening of our week of fasting and praying. So I know that as I share, this is going to truly bless you. Amen. I can see you moving, fidgeting, getting settled, trying to imagine. Are you? Amen. How many of you are getting impatient and say, Stop, Pastor, we need to hear this word from God. Okay, it's coming in a couple of seconds. All right, you ready? Amen, amen, amen. Well, while I've been waiting on the Lord and praying about what to minister in this week of fasting and praying, and as I was going through stuff, nothing seemed to click. But at the back of my mind and in my spirit, I kept on hearing repeatedly the words, high places, high places. And I was trying to ignore it, to be honest with you. But then as I started to sit and go through the word, oh my God, I got so excited because this is a now word. Yes, yes, yes. I really wish everybody you can call upon, no, get them to listen, to listen seriously. I know I preach all the time a blessed word, but this is one of those special messages that is spot on for what is happening in the country and in the world. Yes, I'm titling it High Places. A powerful scripture that can substantiate what my title is all about. Join me. Sure, you got your Bibles. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Wow. Did you realize that the high places is a secret that Satan does not want all of us to be informed about? That's true. Why did I say that? Because he dwells and he moves all over the earth. And we as Christians feel because we are grounded that we think that's it. But some of you might know this, and I pray that all of you will catch it by the time I conclude with my message, because high places is referred to the spirit realm, the world of the spirit. Things happen in the heavenlies, in the spirit realm. And so we think, I can't reach it. It's out of my reach. Oh no, you couldn't be more wrong than what I'm about to share with you this evening. With my experience over the years as a pastor, and as you might have heard, I'm over 40 years in the full-time ministry, casting out demons has been a great anointing over my life and my late dad. Together, we would cast out any demon, no matter how strong it might appear, but we always had the victory, truly, I miss it. But having said that, when we used to have these demon cases, and sometimes I used to question them and ask them, who sent you? 
Where did you come from? Where's your place? Where you stay? And truly, they will repeat and say, I'm in this place. I'm in this city. I'm in this body. You cannot remove me. You cannot take me out. I'm reminded of one case that I handled in Peter Marisburg when so many failed. And when I started, my wife and I started to pray and this demon started to mock and laugh at us and said, you'll never get me out because I'm in the blood. Oh, that he thought was a stopper for me. It wasn't. I got even more excited because the devil didn't realize that we've got the blood of Jesus that is alive and it's real and it's worked over the years in our ministry and it's still working today. Oh, can somebody give me an amen tonight? Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. So, casting out devils has drawn us closer to the Lord. Because as a young Christian, I accompanied my dad, and we cast out many demons. I don't have the time to give you some examples, but I should. But it might frighten you, I promise you. However, let's continue with the message. The word of the Lord came to Moses very strongly. And the Lord spoke to Moses concerning the children of Israel. And he said to them, warn them about these high places. Let's read one verse, then I'll explain the rest. Leviticus chapter 26, verses 30. I will destroy your high places and your cities will lie waste. Wow. How many of you realize that God is against high places. Now we're not talking about tall buildings or skyscrapers. We're talking about spiritual domination in the heavenlies in high places. Now the devil also knows that we as human beings have a tendency to want to worship. It seems that way. So what does the devil do? He brings a distraction from the living God and causes us to worship things that we can see and that we can feel. And as you know, what he said to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, if you would bow down and worship me, all this will I give you. But Jesus said to him, what I am using today, the word, the word. He said, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. Hallelujah. So, here we go and realize this powerful revelation about casting out devils. Now, when you think of Paul, Moses, I say that because he had a hard time with so much of unbelief of the people that God gave him a word to get them out of Egypt, to make their exodus out of Egypt into the promised land. Now, we realize that repeatedly Moses had to rebuke the people because they were craving to worship something they could see. At one stage, they said to Moses, it's better that we go back to Egypt because you left us here in the wilderness to die. What were they implying? We'd rather go back and worship idols? We'd rather go back and worship Pharaoh? Is that what it is? Oh, but God showed up in a massive way. When I say massive, it means that manna rained from heaven, water flowed out of a rock, and so many other miracles God began to perform. So, think about this. God gave us Ten Commandments, but the first one, the first two actually, the first one in Exodus 20 verses 3 to 5, I'm just quoting one. The first commandment, you shall not make for yourself any graved images. Wow. We have such a fear, and we should, about the Ten Commandments, but the first two talk about graven images, other gods. So God is serious. And we need to worship Him and worship Him alone. So God's people should never give a place or give high places to evil spirits. Can I get a witness? That's true. Now again, it breaks our hearts because David was such a great king. And when his son Solomon took over, he was blessed, he was prosperous. But as you all know, he had a very bad 
lustful spirit. And the Bible says, well, I'll read just that one verse to you. And the Bible says in 1 Kings 11, 4, For it was so, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned his heart after other gods. And his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. Isn't that sad? You can lose everything when you take your eyes of God. And who thought that this could happen to a great, great leader, Solomon, the man who had the gift of wisdom like no other. But let's go back and let's go a little deeper. As much as Solomon in his day, when he failed, the Bible teaches us that he did not only take cities, but he brought down nations because the world admired him. They looked up to him. Rich people came and brought him presents. That's how powerful he was. So this man did not only bring down a city, but he brought down nations. Listen to me. It's not so unusual. Even today, when we look around us, the world, we see the same kind of spirits that are impacting our families, our businesses, and sadly to say that there are great and good churches and wonderful men of God around the world. But the question is, how many of them are pulling down strongholds? How many of us are going up to the high places and dismantling the forces of the enemy? So can I encourage you and let you know that whatever high place is above your home, above your church, above your business, I've got good news for you. Because I'm talking about dark powers and rulers in heavenly places that are against mankind more so against the children of the living God. In other words, we say the church. We say the church. That verse goes on to say, we wrestle in spiritual conflict. That's the, that's the missing ingredient, my friend. You cannot bind and destroy if you're not a praying person. If you don't fast and pray, if you don't have a relationship with God, the devil will play havoc with you. And I'm serious. Listen to Ephesians 2.2. 2, in which you once walked according to the cause of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Think about it. Seriously, I'm not implying anything, but you should ask yourself the question and answer it yourself. The Bible says, in the sons of disobedience. Think about what's controlling you, what is influencing you when you find it difficult to make the right decision. When you think that you are confused and you just can't put things together. Think about what I've just said. The Bible says that the spirit works in the sons of of the disobedient. Oh, it's time for disobedient people to repent. It's time for disobedient children to start obeying and listening to the instruction of their parents. Come on. I wish I could see you. Hallelujah. Paul refers to Satan as the prince of the power of the air. Now, this is where I got so excited. Forgive me if I can't contain myself. Oh, help me, Jesus. It says he is the power of of the air he is also the power in the atmosphere wow wow now what do scientists call this virus that the world is experiencing what are they saying about it they say it's in the air it's in the atmosphere it's so dangerous it can catch anybody anywhere anytime come on help me realize oh my god this is a now word this is a word for today this virus that's only hitting south africa but it's hitting the world and fear and intimidation is upon us because we know it's in the air i've got news for you as much as the spirit of the devil is in the air so is the holy ghost 
Hallelujah. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Therefore, born-again believers who are filled with the Holy Ghost and power know how to confront and bring these powers under control. Let's use a better word. Destroy these powers. Hallelujah. So, yes, the scientists say it's in the air. The word power expresses the idea of force, capacity, control. Air means exactly what it says. The breath, the atmosphere. But you know what? God loves cities. Yes, he does. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 16. Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Hallelujah. So what does it mean? We can still take our cities for God. There is no city that is too tough that God is not able to crack, to break, or to cause it to come wide open. Why? Because he's God. Why? Because he loves cities. Why? Because he's for us and not against us. Did you realize that the Bible is full of examples of impossible cities that God had a breakthrough for his people then. And I know he can do it for us now. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. I heard a preacher say one day that the Bible was really the story of two cities in conflict. The city of Zion versus the city of Babylon. Yet all the people of the city of Zion were against the spirit of Babylon. Because what we're talking about, Antichrist, evil spirits, things that come against the living God. The history of churches, I'm, I'm gonna close. The history of churches, when did it begin? The first man to build a city was named Cain, who murdered his younger brother Abel, where they had a dispute over worship. And the Bible continues to say that God put a curse over Cain. And scripture further says that he mocked him. I'm not sure what mock that was. So he was so afraid that he built a city like a fortress because he knew that his life was in danger. But oh, thank God, hallelujah, no matter what they say, how Cain through his spirit can attack churches, even notice, oh, I, I gotta say this, my time is about up, but even notice that cities that are controlled by the enemy and people think they cannot get the victory. Can I remind our church? We are in a city that was demonized, Drugs, violence, addiction, prostitution. Hey, we're in that city. Our church is there. It's built there. It's paid for. It's ours. Devil, we're not going anywhere. And we give you notice to leave our city because we are still here. We're still going to have a victory upon victory. Why? Because when we came into this place, and it's a fact, there were six churches prior to us that rented this building. I don't know all the reasons why they left, but I can conclude right now and say it wasn't easy for us. It was a difficult time, even with our landlord. Sometimes I thought that when he spoke to us, he was like the devil speaking. We used to fear for him because all he wanted was his money, was his rent. But thank God that the day came that God humbled him like a lamb. And when he gave the building over to us for a price that we offered him, he was really shocked. And he said, Pastor Joseph, you can have it at the price that you offered. And then he would phone again and say, you got the building. You're paying for the building. You paid off. See how God can change people? So whatever is in the atmosphere, whatever that bad boss that's over you, prayer will change him. The spirit of God will break that spirit of rebellion and stubbornness over his life. So if God can do it for us and he's still doing it for us. Let's believe God to do it for you today in Jesus name oh I guess there has to be a part two of this message my time is up hallelujah oh thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I'd love to close with the scripture that I started with 
For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Now when we're going to pray, we're going to start pulling down. Whatever you are, don't just stop praying because we are praying. At least, come on, let's be real. At least pray for 15 minutes to half an hour in your home with your children, with your family. We're going to start it off right now and pray with you and believe God for breakthroughs. And guess what? I have a true intercessor with me tonight. Oh yes, a genuine intercessor who knows how to pray. And that's my beautiful wife. I'm calling Pastor Roshni to come and lead us in prayer right now. Come, love. Hallelujah. Preacher, that was a powerful, powerful word. My God. Thank you, man. If you were not touched by that, I don't know how you can just sit back. Come on, church. We are having church greetings yes. in the powerful name of Jesus. It's the month of January, and this is the time that churches here in South Africa and all over the world globally that keeps this time of fasting and prayer. What a good time. What an appropriate time for us to get down on our knees and to call unto God because each and every person in this world has got a need, has has got a problem. My word, we need fasting and prayer. So today, I want you to make that declaration as the man of God has preached that beautiful word. Whatever your desire is, whatever your need is, maybe you have got a loved one that's in hospital that needs that miracle. You are asking God for a supernatural move. Or maybe you have lost a loved one because of COVID, that demonic spirit of COVID, and you are in your home today. You are crying your heart out. You are grieved in your spirit. I believe that God is able to lift that heaviness. So join me this evening as we call upon the name of Jesus, yes. the name that is above every other name. Let's pray together. Hallelujah. Father, we come to you yes, in the Lord. mighty name yes, of Lord. Jesus. Yes, My God, there is oh, no other Jesus, name Jesus. that is above Jesus. your Jesus. name. Your name is you, Lord. power, Lord. Your you, Lord. name is healing, my God. You, Your name is deliverance. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, so yes. tonight, Father, you know the need of every person Jesus, that has Jesus, tuned Jesus. in tonight, oh God. Even as they would stand Lord, proxy Lord, for their Lord, loved Lord, ones, Lord, Father. Lord, and especially, oh God, we oh, bring the spirit, Lord. Oh, yes, God. it is a spirit in the yes, atmosphere. Yes, the spirit Lord. of COVID-19, yes. oh God. We trample it right yes. now in the name of Jesus. Yes. You are not more in powerful than the blood in of Jesus. Jesus Lord, you in have Jesus died name. and you have paid the oh, price gosh. so that we don't have to die in sickness, oh God. Yes. We don't yes. have to yes. die yes. with this disease, Mighty Father. God. But Lord, tonight, my Mercy. God, I bring Mercy. your people before you. Many yes. of you yes. are feeling so Thank mentally you, tired, oh yes. God. They're so grieved in their spirit. Oh, they are crying yes, out for someone to come and help yes, them. So yes. many people are just lonely, oh God, looking at the four walls, my God. And tonight, Father, I pray that your spirit, Lord, would reach out right now Hallelujah. and touch them yes. in the mighty name of oh, Jesus. Please, hallelujah, Lord. hallelujah. Please, Father, every person, oh, every worship please, that doesn't please, belong please, to please. you, my God, God, we bring down this enemy of COVID-19 right now yes, in Lord. the yes, name Lord. of Jesus. Yes, and we pray, Father, every bit Jesus. of heaviness, every bit yes, of heaviness Lord. to be removed, in every Jesus. heavy heart, every Lord. lonely heart, every crying heart, Father, we bring before Lord. you right Jesus. now. Lord. We make a declaration, Lord, that there will be no more deaths of
to hover over oh, them God. right now oh, in the mighty name, mighty of name of Jesus. We thank you and we give you all the praise, the glory and the honor because truly Lord, you are a supernatural God and we give you praise right now. And everybody says, Amen and Amen. Thank you so much. We just love you. We are missing church. We are missing you. But please stay indoors as much as possible. Just take heed to what the president has been saying. Pray for him. Pray for the government as well. Tonight my prayer was for those that have been left without loved ones, for those that are succumbing to this COVID-19, for those that are in hospital. So please, church, please, people of God, just listen and obey all of them. Stay indoors as much as possible. Well, the next is here, the chorus, or just one verse of it. And you know that I used to love to sing it in church. And my son sings it beautifully. By the devil tomorrow, we're gonna tear hey. that devil's kingdom down. through the 
the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. We bind it, you devil. We cancel you in Jesus' mighty name. Oh God, oh God, break this virus, break this spirit, Lord. Let peace come into the nations of the world in Jesus' name. Lord, we cover our church under the blood of Jesus. We cover our pastors, our leaders, our workers, our congregation. We cover protection over every church, over every ministry, Lord, who's seeking you, praying. Cover them, cover them, cover them, Father. We ask you right now, dear Lord, let us spirit of the anointing of the Holy Ghost pull down and destroy every high place that the devil wants to have over our homes, over our businesses, over our over our churches. Hey, we pull it down in Jesus' name. Come on, let me hear you and do it like we do it in church. Pulling down every stronghold. Pull it down, pull it down. We pull down every stronghold in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Father, we just ask you to bless us, strengthen us, draw us ever so closer to you, Heavenly Father. We pray right now for our president. Give him wisdom and his cabinet to make right decisions at this crucial stage in our lives. We pray for doctors and nurses. Oh Lord, we are losing good people. We're losing professional people, Father. In the name of Jesus, your mercy, your mercy be extended. We are excited. And Lord, I give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And everybody said, one more time.